today if you look at to the word of God with me and first John chapter 1 beginning at the fifth verse this week as I was reading these verses st stood out and said this then is the message which you have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness we lie and do not the truth but if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin and as believers in Jesus Christ we are instructed and expected to be walking in the light and not walking in darkness and how many of you know that Jesus himself should make a difference in our life can I say that again I said Jesus should make a difference in our life And we that are walking in the light, we also should identify those who choose to walk in darkness and how to avoid them. The Bible says in Ephesians 5 and 10, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Everything is not acceptable to God. And then it says in verse 11, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. And this is because we are the light in the Lord, and, and we are to walk as children of the light. We, we, we are to be noticeably different from those who dwell in darkness. When I look around today, if there was a time for us to make a difference is right now. We're living in a critical hour now. Seems like that the world, a man is in charge. Come on. But I believe that God still got some people that are going to walk in the light. I believe that God still got some people that's going to cry holy. I believe that God still got some people that's going to be an example to the world. I believe that God still got some people that will say, for Christ I live and for Christ I die. I believe that God still got some people that's going to stand for right and righteousness. Well, bless his name. Amen. These verses are designed to teach us that we are different from the world around us. And, and since we are different, we should live lives that are different. Amen. I, when I look around today, amen, the church, amen, has lowered its standard. Amen. But I believe that God is sending us a word now saying we need to get back in a right relationship with him. 
you know, God will give me a message. And the message is to cry and tell my people, amen, to get closer to me. But in order for you to get closer to me, there's something you got to do. You got to lay aside some things. And whether you know it or not, the simple truth is that believers should be different from those who do not know the Lord Jesus. There should be a difference. There will be a difference between clean and unclean. Amen. We need to understand that it's going to take the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse us from sin. And walking in the light means a readiness to call sin, sin. And let me tell you one thing. The Bible says that all unrighteousness is sin. And them to know to do good and do it not to him is sin. And a lot of times we don't want to acknowledge where we are. We don't want to admit that we have sinned. We don't want to call it sin. We want to call it something else. I don't care what name you use, it's still sin. And walking in the light means a readiness to call sin, sin. And if God has shown you something is wrong in your life, and God will show you you. A lot of times, we justify what we do. I'm guilty. I'm guilty of justifying what I did. And saying it wasn't because it was, wasn't that bad, but guess what? Sin is still sin. If I don't, if I talk to my wife wrong, come on. I can justify saying, well, she did this, she did that. That's why I did it. But that's no justification. Did you hear what I said? That's no justification. And we try to justify our actions. But I'm going to tell you today, Amen. The time is coming when you're going to stand before God and going to give an account of the deeds done in your flesh. Hmm? The walking, walking in the light means they're ready to walk in obedience to all God's instructions in the Word of God. God says He has given us instructions how we're supposed to do it. But we got to want to be obeyed. We, I, I see sometimes that's a problem. We know what the Word of God says. How many of y'all know what the Word of God says? Let me see your hand. You know, you know, you know what it says, but there's something inside of you that says it don't take all of that. There's something inside of us that talks to us it says, listen, you can do it your way. Hmm? This thing also means a readiness to have the Holy Ghost melt you and mold you into the Jesus on the cross and whatever said is necessary. We need to understand something that is going to take God to change us. You can't change yourself. Anybody ever tried to change yourself? Let me see your hand. You tried to change yourself. Come on. Amen. I've tried, I've tried, I've tried. Amen. To change some things about me. But I found out that I cannot change myself. It's going to take God, amen, allowing God to change me if I want to change. How many of you know something that we don't want to change? Sometimes we like the way we are. Huh? But the Bible says we got to realize something. This is not our home. Some of us, we live like that. This is it. But the Bible says in 1 Peter 2 and 11, said, Dearly beloved, 
I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. Abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against our soul. As strangers and pilgrims in this world, there was a time we were citizens of this world. <laughs> Some of them, what do you mean, preacher? We live like they lived. We thought like they think. We did what they did. Somebody said, wait a minute, wait a minute, what are you talking about? Every last one of us in here, before we accepted Christ, if you have accepted him, you did your thing. Some of you fornicated. Some committed adultery. Some smoked reefer. Some drank liquor. Come on. Some stole. Some lied. Some cheated. And you enjoyed what you was doing. You said, I'm having fun. But then you heard about Jesus. And when you heard about Jesus, he came in and changed your life. Because the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. In other words, when you accept Christ in your life, you will not do what you used to do. You don't want to look like you used to look. Somebody wrote a song, said, I looked at my hands and my hands look new. I looked at my feet and they did too. Now, now what did that mean? That didn't mean that I had, amen, I still had the same hands. But these hands didn't do what they used to do. These hands that used to, amen, shoot dice and amen, shoot crap, they don't do that no more. Amen. These same hands that stole those.